What's up everybody, my name is Scott Paddock and today I'm gonna to show you an exercise that will help you learn and memorize your 251 chord progression. The 251 chord progression is one of the main building blocks for most jazz standard songs. So if you wanna learn how to improvise over jazz standards, you have to get your 251 chord progressions down. So today I'm gonna to show you a really great exercise to use to get the 251 chord progression under your fingers and in your ears. There is a free PDF download for this tutorial, so click the link below in the video description to get that free PDF download. If you don't already know what a 251 chord progression is, I have done videos on those in the past, so I'll put a link to those videos in the description below as well. For a very quick recap, the 251 chord progression is based off of your modes. So the two is based off of the second mode, which is the Dorian minor mode. The five is based off of the fifth mode, which is the Mixolydian mode. And of course the one is based off of the major scale and its modal name is Ionian. Now, before we get started with the exercise, there is something that you need to know that will make this exercise and two five ones in general a whole lot easier. This is really important. The two five one chord progression is based off of the interval of a fourth. So no matter where you are in the two five one chord progression, you are always gonna be moving the interval of a fourth, which is counterclockwise around the circle of fourths. So if we have a two five one in the key of G, we have an A minor seven going to a D seven to G major seven. So here's where things might get a little confusing. If we have a two five one, how can the five to a one be the interval of a fourth? That doesn't make any sense, right? So here is the answer. When we're talking about intervals, we're talking about the distance between the first note to the second note. So if we're doing a two five one in the key of G, that'd be A minor seven, D seven to G major seven. So the D seven to G major seven, we would think about the distance between the D and the G. So D, E, F sharp, G, that is a fourth. When we're talking about chord progressions, we're talking about how everything is related to the one the tonic, so that would be G, and D is a fifth away from G. So when you're talking about intervals, it's the distance between the first note going to the second note. When you're talking about chord progressions, it's how everything is related to the tonic. Let's dive into the exercise. So we start off with a two, five, one in the key of G major, and we are gonna do chord outlines for each of the chords. So we start off with the A minor seven. Then we go to a D seven. And then we have two measures of the G major seven. Here is what is so effective about this exercise. We are now gonna take the one, which is the G major seven, and turn it into the two of the next two, five, one. That two, five, one will be a whole step down, which would be a two, five, one in F. So we are taking that G major seven and turning it into the two, which is a G minor seven in the key of F. So we have a G minor seven, going to a C dominant seventh, going to an F major seven. Practicing your two five ones like this is gonna get that sound into your ears and get you really, really comfortable with moving and hearing the interval of a fourth. Take a listen, starting from the beginning. This exercise is gonna get the two, five, one sound and the interval of a fourth in your ears, and it's gonna get you really, really comfortable with switching the quality of chords because you're gonna be going from major to minor, and then eventually in the same exercise, you'll be playing that same chord as a dominant seventh chord. So you'll be able to switch qualities of chords with no problems at all while you are getting the two, five, one sound in your ears. After we play the two, five, one in the key of F major, we turn that one into a two. So we turn the F major into a F minor seven. Then we have a B flat seven going to an E flat major seven. Take a listen from the top.
<laughs> if you're watching this video, then I'm guessing you'd like to get a whole lot better at improvisation. If that's the case, then I'd like to invite you to come check me out at the Scott Paddock Sax School. In my sax school, I have several courses dedicated to improvisation that will start you off at the very, very beginning and take you step by step all the way through improvising over advanced chord progressions. In addition to improvisation, I have courses dedicated to just about anything you wanna learn on the saxophone that will take the guesswork out of what to practice, how to practice, and what to practice next. So if you're ready to take your saxophone playing to the next level, come check me out at the Scott Paddock Sax School. I'll put a link in the video description below. After we play the 251 in the key of E flat, we are gonna turn the one, which is the E flat, into a two. This time we're gonna do things a little bit differently. Instead of calling the two an E flat, we are gonna do the enharmonic spelling and call it a D sharp. So E flat and D sharp are obviously the same notes, but because we're doing a two, five, one in C sharp major this time, we need to call the two by the correct name, which is D sharp, because you have a D sharp in your C sharp major scale, you do not have an E flat. So your two is gonna be a D sharp minor seven, your five is gonna be a G sharp seven, and your one is gonna be a C sharp major seven. Now, theoretically, this might sound a little weird because there is no D sharp scale. If you had a D sharp scale, it would have nine sharps, and there is no G sharp scale. If you had a G sharp scale, it would have eight sharps, but when we're doing two five ones, we wanna relate the name of the chord to the tonic, the one. And in this case, the one is C sharp, so we're gonna call that a D sharp and a G sharp. Now you can think E flat and A flat if you want, but when you write those out, you definitely wanna have them related to the one. Take a listen, starting from the D sharp minor seven. Then we turn the one, which is the C sharp major seven into the two, so it would be a C sharp minor seven for a two, five, one in the key of B major. Then we turn the one, which is a B major seven, into the two, which would be a B minor seven for a two, five, one in the key of A major. Then we take the one, which is A major seven, and turn it into the two, which would be A minor seven, and do a two, five, one in the key of G major, which means we would repeat back to the top. Now here is one of the many great things about this exercise you are only concentrating on six keys at a time because we are going down by a whole step after we play each two, five, one. So that takes us through six keys. So there are two exercises. The first one has your first six keys and the second exercise has your second set of six keys. So you're gonna work on your first exercise first and then when you get that down, then move on to the second one. Now you could start this exercise in any key that you want, but I started in the key of G because that gives you a really good running start you have two pretty easy two five ones before things get more difficult. Now the best way to work on this exercise is to get one key down and then connect it to the next. So get G down and then connect it to F. Get F down and connect it to E flat. Get E flat down, connect it to C sharp, so on and so forth. Don't just start at the top and go all the way to the bottom. Try and get them connected so that you are really, really comfortable with each of these keys. This is really important. You can start off by reading the exercise to get the sound in your ears and get it under your fingers a little bit, but you wanna get rid of the music as soon as possible. You wanna do this 251 exercise from memory and by ear. The faster you start working on doing it by ear and from memory, the better it's gonna sound and the easier it's gonna be for you to memorize your 251s. Now, again, to do this, start off by just adding one key at a time. That's gonna make it a whole lot more manageable than trying to go through all six keys at once. The more you work on this exercise, the more your fingers are just gonna start jumping to the interval of a fourth. Your ears are gonna get used to it, you're just gonna hear it, and then from there, you just need to plug in the right quality of the chord. This exercise will take a little while to master, but once you get it down, you'll be absolutely crushing your two five ones. Once you get the exercise down as is, the next step is to add a rhythm to it. So it feels a little bit more like a solo and it's a lot more fun to play. Then after you're really comfortable with that, 
The last step is to jump around in the chord. In other words, don't just play one, three, five, seven in order. Jump around in that chord so that it feels a lot more like a solo. That will really lock in your two, five, one chord progressions to the point where you don't even have to think about them anymore. Thanks for taking the time to check out this video. Have fun working on these two, five, one exercises. And if you'd like to dive deeper into my saxophone world, come check me out at the Scott Paddock Sax School. Uh-huh.